What's good y'all? Welcome to the Soul by Soul YouTube channel. We're back at it again. This time Frankie and I linked up in Boston and we're like, let's film some content. So today we're finally starting our series that's more of a long format video. So stay tuned. We're talking about New Balance. As you see the setup here, it's gonna be a really interesting conversation. If this is your first time tuning into the channel, welcome. You know, if you like what you see in today's video, please hit that like button. And then definitely subscribe to the channel for more content. Frank, you want to start us off on what we're talking about when it comes to New Balance today? Yeah, so really we're we really having a conversation right now just about New Balance in general. And you know, we've seen that y'all really like New Balance. It's obvious that we really like New Balance here at Soul by Soul. And you know, we just kind of wanted to have a little bit of discussion about it because it's really taken, you know, just the sneaker world by storm, specifically this year in 2022. Um, but it's interesting because really with New Balance, they've really been known as like, you know, having the quintessential dad shoe the performance, running shoes, you know, that's really been their main kind of uh, cash cow, if you will. Yeah. But up until, like, I would say, I would argue the back half of last year, they've really started to do something really special with really capturing, like, the zeitgeist of streetwear, lifestyle brand. And then especially this year, as y'all can see, they've really just done an amazing job. They're just now a major player in the sneaker world. And it's really awesome to see because we're really big fans and we really are so excited to see what else New Balance will bring to the table. But, you know, I I just kind of wanted us to talk a little bit about like what really got us into New Balance to begin with. So Mike, I'm gonna ask you like, you know, how did you get into New Balance? And you know, if there was a sneaker that really got you thinking of like, oh, I need to check them out a bit more. I feel like for me, my resurgence into the sneaker world was definitely in 2017, yeah. going into 2018. So that's where I started to pay attention. And then I would say I was able to afford sneakers more. Facts. So, you know, it was definitely Jordan big time, Nike big time. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the Ultra Boost era, yeah. the NMD era, yeah. the Jordan 1, kind of like whatever you can grab, you got it that sort of era so i mean those were the power players at the time and i felt like i knew new balance was around maybe 2019 2020 i like started to see them mm -hmm. but i feel like i really wasn't trying to go down that lane because i'm like ah you just hear the reputation of new balance and you kind of think ah it's not that hot yeah. they don't really got the juice like that they don't really have silhouettes so i i, I don't even think i gave them a chance mm -hmm. and I think I paid attention to them more when the 550s were on the map. Okay. But I'd say just a little bit before then. Okay. I can't even pinpoint a particular shoe, maybe one of the 990 series. Okay. Um, and I just said like, oh, these kind of like look cool or comfortable. Yeah. But I, I was hesitant on diving deeper. Yeah. I think the 550s, although I was paying attention to them from a little bit before, mm -hmm. I think the 550 sort of propelled me to be like, oh shoot, they collab with ALD on something. Mm -hmm. Like what might that look like? Mm -hmm. And then you kind of see the vintage look, you see the vibes there, you see that there are other silhouettes kind of in that ballpark, mm -hmm. you see the collaborators, and then it's like, yo, there's more to it yeah. than just meets the eye. Right, right. They're actual fire sneakers mm -hmm. that they can make. And this is just, you know, partially what we think is hot but there's also other new balance sneakers and some from before yeah you know that now we're kind of looking at as oh wow like they have a whole catalog right so for you what was it same question like yeah how did that manifest for you yeah it's interesting i feel like you know as, as we said it's always been the quintessential dashi for me and yeah. so like anytime i hear the word new balance i'm like i'm like typecasting a 40 year old yeah. you know white picket fans, two kids, like that's what I think of when I think of New Balance at the time, like, you know, I would say two years ago in 2020. And I feel like, you know, 2019, 2020 for me was like when I started getting into, really getting into sneakers, like a lot, a lot. And the shoe that caught my eye from New Balance that really started making me think, I believe it was the 2002R Salehi Benberries, the first ones oh, okay. that he released. Okay. Is that Water Be That Guy? The, the ones before Water Be That oh, Guy. Oh, true, true, true. I'm blanking Peace on the Peace Be name. The Journey? Dang, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah Peace okay. Be The Journey, man. Okay. 
that shoe just looked incredible. Yeah. And I was like, wait a second, this is New Balance? Right. They do this? Right. And then like, you know, you start, you know, recognizing that, yo, they've been doing some collaborations out here. Mm -hmm. You know, Joe Fresh Goods did a, a collaboration with them in 2020. That Anatomy was like- Anatomy of the Heart. Yeah, and right. that was like a part of Sneaker of the Year list. And I was like, oh, okay, right. ALD, another yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like, you start recognizing this and you're like, oh, okay, so, What's going on here? So, you know, start diving in, dipping your toes in. And I think the thing that sold me with New Balance is they have been able to really figure out just how to make comfort with style. Mm. Like for me, comfort mm. with style. I think, Facts. you know, you were talking about NMDs back in 2018, like comfort with style. Mm -hmm. Like this is, a, this is a great comfortable sneaker, but also great for lifestyle, great right. to go out with, right. you know, Jordans, unfortunately, they're not the most comfortable, yeah. but like they're just they're just really part of the culture and they capture the zeitgeist, they capture that lifestyle. But New Balance, I think, has really figured out how to capture both. Right. Here's style, but here's also comfort. So not only are like people looking at what you got, but you're also like, my feet really feel good in this at the yeah, same time. Yeah, you know, yeah. so uh, that really is like kind of what really got me uh, obsessed. I would say, mm -hmm. New Balance. Kind of obsessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mike, uh, I just talked about a little bit about the comfort and style. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that's really working, but I want us to dive a little bit deeper because I feel like us talking about what's working with New Balance right now, it's yeah. really gonna be informative to people that may not know a lot about New Balance, but it could also be really helpful to also affirm other people that know about New Balance and have been rocking with New Balance longer than us. Like, yeah, that's exactly why I like this. So I just kind of wanted to get your take on Right now, what what is working for New Balance and what it is that has really made them be a, a powerhouse right now in the sneaker world? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's kind of right in front of us in a sense. <laughs> I think that what's been going well is they're kind of going into the vault of what they have, mm -hmm. right? And I think their silhouettes and colorways are hitting now more than ever. Yeah. And I think it's just due to also their consistency. I feel like they didn't get bogged down by, oh, the the giants of Nike or Adidas are doing things like this or in this way. We need to do it in this way. Yeah. I think they've stayed true to kind of their foundation. And what's been interesting, I think, with the incorporation of collaborators mm -hmm. to then go to those older models, older silhouettes that had released years ago mm -hmm. and kind of give it a fresh new perspective. Yes, we see that from Nike Jordan, but at times it's like such an oversaturation on that side. Mm -hmm. But then on the side of New Balance, I think they just so cleanly do it. Yeah. On top of which, it's like, if nothing else, you could rely on those materials. So you may have to front $150, $200, but you know the material, mm -hmm. the craftsmanship, mm -hmm. That's gonna go a long way. It's gonna get you further than probably a Jordan's gonna get you for that same price point mm -hmm. with the inflation incorporated as well. Ooh. So I just feel like the the silhouettes and the collaborators, they're just staying true yeah. to, to what New Balance is all about, yeah. right? And then you have something like this, the Joe Fresh Goods mm -hmm. uh, 990 V3s, and it's the outside clothes version, and you see how all that detail is spun in it. It's yeah. still, that 990 V3 sneaker silhouette that's like true to New Balance, right. but he put his foot in it. Yes. No pun intended. <laughs> like he threw this colorway together. He had a story to tell with it. Yeah. It felt very organic. It felt very origin story. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like it really captured his essence, but on the New Balance model. Yeah. So he didn't have to go to a Jordan 1 to do something like that. He was able to do something on a classic from New Balance. Right, right. You know, and yeah, we got some more. <laughs> more Joe J Fresh Goods. FG, Joe Fresh Goods yeah. collabs. But once again, just keeping within the pastel range, keeping to the nice materials, mm -hmm. you know, giving a, a different lace hit. Yeah, it's a, a sneaker that looks this style, mm -hmm. but I think obviously a banger of the year. Yeah. So I think that is a part of their source code. That is something that they've understood how to do, kind yeah. of flowing into that lifestyle arena, mm -hmm. but staying true to themselves at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm glad you mentioned too, like kind of the the staying in the pastel, right? Because that's something that you know Joe Freshkoos was very intentional with his collaborations uh, with New Balance. Like they've really all been um, 
working with the same color blockings. You know, he really didn't stray away or try to do something different, really stay within this mold, which, you know, I feel like, uh, to Jordan's credit, they've done with Travis Scott, right? Like, mm. those brown, those desert, like, you know, really uh, uh, just more distressed colors, like, right. they kind of stay in that lane. They did, th like, kind of do something a little bit different with the fragments, uh, Jordan 1 lows that were a little bit more vibrant, but otherwise, they really stayed in this, like, desert form. Mm -hmm. But I feel like with what you were saying with New Balance and the technology, like, you just know you're gonna get more comfort from, like, a 993 right. uh, versus a Jordan 1, for right. example. Um, and, I, and I feel like, you know, one of the things I think about when it comes to New Balance and what's working for them is I think they just really done a good job with sneakers that really could stand the test of time, right? Like I look at all yeah. of these sneakers right here that we got lined up, yeah. you know, from uh, a, a late model uh, to the newest model with the 1906s that are that are right here, right? All of these I'm looking at right now and I'm like, yo, in 10 years I think they, they, they're not going to age. Like in terms of like, th these can still stand the test of time. I don't see them being like, oh yeah, like that was great for like that point in history. Right. You know, like I feel like for example, NMDs, right? Like in 2018, they were everything. Mm -hmm. Now, eh, you know, people don't really talk about it that much. Yeah, they're dead. They're, yeah, but like with a lot of New Balance models from 990s to 550s to 2002Rs, you know, speaking about the 2002 R's, right? You know, this 2002 R protection pack, you would look at it and you're like, oh, so what collaborator did they get on it? True, true, true. They got, true. They got nobody. Right. No, this right. was new bad. But it looks that way. But it looks that way, right? Like mm -hmm. you look at it and you're like, oh, who put their like creative spin on this? Like who touched this? Like right. this was like from the from the creative minds at New Balance themselves. It wasn't a like mm -hmm. a, a, a collaborator or anything like that. And I mean, if they're doing this right now with just like their creative thing, imagine like what they're gonna do moving forward. So it's just like, they've, they're they doing such a great job at figuring out like, here's something that's gonna work right now and it'll still be great later on. We're gonna be adding more to the, the Rolodex, if you will, of yeah. like everything that we got here. You right, know? let's think about like what the future holds yeah. for New Balance, right? Because, I see what Teddy Santis is doing with something like this, right? Mm -hmm. And his collection, and now he's in the volume two of his collection, mm -hmm. the Made in USA collection, and it's super dope. Yeah. You know, I feel like the silhouettes, they're giving you a lot of colorways, you know, they're focusing on the 990s, yeah. um, but in every collection, the first one, and now this one, something catches my eye. This right. one caught my eye at the New Balance store, and I was like, damn it, I have to get it. <laughs> I can't fight it off, I have to get it. Right. And you know, you'll see some B-roll and whatnot of this sneaker on feet, and it's a really nice sneaker. Mm -hmm. um, so he's doing his thing with that, and that's part of the future, or thinking of what happens next. But yeah. what are you thinking? What What does the future look like from their perspective, maybe? I, I really think it's a continuation of what's already brought them to the dance. So, yeah. like, I keep, I keep, I, it might sound like a broken record, but it's really true. Combining style and comfort, right? right. So, 1906. Yeah. Right. This is like the latest model to really hit the hit the block, if you will. Fire, fire, mm -hmm. fire, fire. And you can see, right, that like it has those, uh, you know, design elements and technology similar to other New Balance models, but it's different. It looks yeah. different. It feels different feels a little futuristic to me, even though it has like 1906, which is alluding to, you know, the history of New Balance, but it looks fire. And similar to you, saw it at the flagship and said, I need it. <laughs> I need it. What I can need I do? It. What can, right. Now, now we possess. <laughs> right, exactly. So, you know, really just focusing on the comfort style, pushing the envelope on the tech side of things. Um, I really want them to see what they could do like with popular culture. Right, I think they've done mm -hmm. such a good job with tapping into creatives and tapping in uh, to artists. Right. What can they do with like basketball, for example? I know they got Kyle, yeah. I know they got Kawhi in tow. You know, I know they got other players involved, but you know, there's not much going on there. And I feel like that could be a realm where, like, if you really market it well, you really find a a a, a nice touch between style and comfort. I think that will be a moment where you're like, whoa, hold up a second. Because right now with the six, let's be honest, with the 650s, I'm yeah. not really a huge fan. They're not really hitting. They're not, They're really, not really hitting. hitting, you know? 
And a lot of these, uh, the, these other basketball sneakers that they do have, you look at them and you're like, you're not like, I really want them. Like with these low top lifestyle sneakers. Right. And I feel like that's one thing that, you know, especially Jordan figured out, like, all these basketball sneakers, we know people are going to like because Michael wore them. It's got to be the shoes. Mm -hmm. What can New Balance do in that front? I'm, I'm very, very curious to see what they do there. And one second, one second. Let me just say, this wasn't even in the shop, but I brought it in. <laughs> so I like the conversation amongst us, yes. 2002 R. I like the pack. I like the 550. And then, I mean, we didn't get it, but there was the Kawhi sneaker, the basketball yeah, sneaker. Yeah. His signature shoe that kind of mirrored or mimicked the same color palette um so that was interesting kind of what you're saying of like that cultural aspect mm -hmm. jfg worked with the right new balance team on these and it's like there was a story within it kind of like those barbershop conversations yeah. or bathroom conversations you might have or you know just within the culture or amongst black people yeah. uh, for this particular collab and that transition into the Kawhi side I feel like the basketball realm even though Kawhi was in the commercials could have been a little bit more amplified mm -hmm. but I feel like they touch on it but they don't like dive deeper in it to right. get like more of the perspective behind the athlete if they're yeah. Kawhi's their signature one even with him they could do more yeah so i feel like i don't know like the storytelling that exists with the salehi who's mm -hmm. a collaborator with a joe fresh goods mm -hmm. with the teddy santis mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. just kind of if they want to go into the athletic route like yeah. bring that story out of the athlete yeah. let's say yeah and i will say one last thing if i can you just mentioned the packs yeah man they, New Balance has done a fantastic job of presenting packs. Yeah. Performance art, for example, right? right we got right. two of the three. Right. You know, we got the, the 990 V3 Made in USA collection. Right. 2002 our, uh, 2002, our conversation amongst us, protection pack. Like, they're making it so like, yo, you don't want just one. Yeah. You want it's like them a collectible. All. Yeah. It's a collect. Yeah. It's a collectible. Yeah. They're making it something like as a, if you're a sneaker collector or you just like to have like, well, like one of everything like this is what you need to have this is what you got to get and that's not something that other brands like have been able to really well it's like loss it's yeah, like, it's, like yeah. it's like jordan back in the in the day when you get the two packs that equal up to 23 right. like that was fire right you do get it with a collaborator every now and again right they usually give you a few different mm -hmm. colorways but i feel like just the standards the standards or, exactly. or the ogs or the new sneak i don't know you just don't get it in the same way of like mm -hmm. you have the performance art and you're like damn i gotta collect them all oh, yeah or you have the 1906s that came together it's like whoa I, a I few colorways yeah. like i'm wavering i might need two you yeah. know so that's not the same feeling i right. think right now from some of the other brands right 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 well I think this was a great conversation, man. Yo, man. I think I think, I think this, so. I think this was dope. Uh, I love that we are able to keep putting a spotlight on New Balance. Right. Let us know what y'all think uh, of our conversation and be a part of this conversation in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more content. We got more. Baby. We got more on the way. Thanks so much for tuning into this video. Stay tuned for what's next, y'all. Peace.